Sup, Nibbles? Cheat all back with another goddamn homeboy hangouts. Fucking here at a goddamn Zoom show in Cleveland and just hanging on out. We found goddamn Paul again, right? Likely sight out here at a metal show in Cleveland, huh? Yep. You had all of them, Paul? I, whatever I can make, man. Too dumb to quit. I never actually, you, uh, I've never heard you talk about it. Well, I just never brought it up, and you never brought it up. Is, um, what is your take on Exum? Like, what did you like, not like? Just like everything, best album, worst album. Like, what did you think of them? Like, I never actually talked to you about them. Just throughout the years? Yeah, yeah. I've always been an Exum fan. But do you like all the records? or what you're like, I, ah, I, I do. I mean, I mean honestly, like. I mean, everybody has a nostalgic element to what they like. Um, you know, so obviously I'm a little partial to the early material just because yeah. it's so raw, it's so sick. Um, obviously, being from Cleveland, we have the connection here with the uh, the Hemdale and Exum split that you guys just reissued on uh, yeah. what vinyl and CD too. Yeah, I didn't yep. realize you did the CD too. But yeah, I it wasn't this. Yeah, it wasn't a uh, plan on doing it. It's easy. He said he's like, well, why don't we just do a CD too? I was like, I, was like, I didn't really ask them to do that because I was like, I didn't. I was thinking just for myself because mm -hmm. I already own the CD. I was like, well, right. fuck it, why not? It's the first business. Why not? It's out of print. So cool. So okay, yeah, you know? I mean, Exum does totally kick ass they've, they've i mean obviously i knew them before that split but um when i got that split i mean that just i mean that just totally blew it up i mean craig rowe at that time too um you know from hemdale obviously had visceral productions going on and what a treat that was to be in cleveland to go to shows back then and just to have that much selection of metal i mean he had bought um stage three distribution which was a huge distro back in the day that did a bunch of like nuclear blast and um, just all types of various record labels. They printed tour merch for bands. So like all like the original hypocrisy shirts, like the Oscar and I've seen them long sleeve yeah. and all that are on stage three. Sinister shirts from the Cannibal Tour for the Bleeding, stage three. Pretty big outfit. So he had all that. Looking back on it, man, like the amount of cool shit he had in bulk from buying up shit, just, you know, was amazing. Jail America releases, Drown production stuff at, you know, dime a dozen. I mean, you can go literally buy a Roger War for like, what, 10 bucks, you know, seven bucks on sale, something like that. And it's always set up at the shows, always, you know, ready. But I think for Exhumed, I'm trying to think what the first time I saw him in Cleveland was. I can't actually remember the first time I saw him in Cleveland, what year that was. But I remember seeing him, you know, going to Milwaukee Metal Fest and other stuff, and you know, in the late 90s at least. Toured all the time through here, I'm sure. You might have been at the show with uh, Skinless. Were you on that tour when it was... Uh, Skinless and um, Exhumed. I'm trying to think. I see Exhumed because when I first time I saw Exhumed was they were opening up for Mayhem on the Grand Declaration uh, War Tour, and Mayhem canceled. Uh, but a year or so before that is when I saw Skinless for the first time. That was with Mortician. Oh, that was Mortician. Yes, yeah, yeah. Mortician. Yeah. But I think uh, I you know up. what though. Mortician. You know what is uh, one of the Ohio Death Fest Skinless played and Exhumed play. I can't remember if it was the same year though. They both did play Ohio Death Fest at, at the Flying Machine. Yeah, I can't remember if they're separate years, separate days, or what. I can't. Remember. I think uh, it was oh one or two thousand. I, I think it was maybe oh one. Let's be skinless. What happened to goddamn Sherwood? He ducked me. We well, you know it's weird. He came up to me. At, I was like, oh shit, motherfucker, actually did. Because somebody told me in the comments, like I told Sherwood about your videos, and he yeah. thought it was funny me ripping on the bass player. Yeah. And I was like, oh cool, actually, someone that got some goddamn fucking <laughs> sack around here to take a joke. Goddamn it. <laughs> And uh, he thought it was funny. He's he, a good sport. He walked up to me at uh, at Milwaukee, and uh, he was, "Oh, hey, dude, what's going on?" I was like, "Yeah, you want to shoot a video?" He's like, "Yeah, you want to do it now?" I was like, "I was like, well, actually, I'm supposed to do a uh, video with uh, Glenn in about 15, 20 minutes. Waited three hours and didn't get it. So I would have got it there. I was like, uh, I was like, well, we can do it after you play or whatever." He's like, "Yeah, yeah." I was like, "Well, can we do it at MDF?" He didn't come after they played, and he didn't come back to uh, stand in Maryland. Also, I don't know. I mean, he came up to me, so it wasn't like, "Ah, fuck that guy." Like, I don't want him to show back up. I was like. You know, I mean, it's just, I was looking forward to doing it with them. It's like a whole city of metal down there, though. So who knows, man? He gets pulled a bunch of different directions. Yeah, we'll, I mean, we'll just have to get him in Cleveland and get him cornered here, right? You got to book Skinless in Cleveland, and uh, you know, get a prime opportunity to just sit, you know, face to face with him. Yeah, yeah. I mean, pin him down where he's got nowhere to go, like this basement here. Yeah. No, and I, would, <laughs> and I would, I wouldn't mind having him, or you know, having him play my show or something. The only slight not turn off from is uh. It's becoming a little nostalgic how they're doing like the first two albums stuff because they're doing a lot of shows now of that. It wasn't like mm -hmm. it seemed like when you said they played L.A. or whatever, it was like, uh, it was like, oh shit! But now it's like they're doing they're you know, doing Maryland everything. Now. Doing, yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So it's like ah fuck, well, everybody's getting to see them now. It's not as cool. You know what I mean? Mm, yeah, the first two records, man. I mean oh, that great. stuff. 
I mean, you talk about a band like Skinless. I mean, when Brian had a store, you know, Extreme Music and everything, yeah. got those in, the original Step Up Entertainment, you know, copies and all that. Or maybe it was even the Ablated Distro, one of the two. Yeah. But anyway, I definitely got that from him. Um, but, yeah, Exhumed, uh, how cool. And then them and Hemdale, too, got to go to the Grind Over Europe tour. So, like, to see a Cleveland band like Hemdale, you know what I mean, get to go to Europe, you know, with Exhumed and Nyctophobic that was on that, too. So just yeah. uh, well, there's a lot of people now for sure. They don't know who Hemdale is, like outside of Cleveland. Right, right, and um, you know, I, I honestly, man, that that band was such a staple. You saw them fucking almost on every show. Like, you got to think a Cleveland local show back in the day was so killer, man. Like, you you could go to a local show uh, for a period of years and see Incantation, which was a local Cleveland band for like you know ninety four, ninety five, up until John. You know, moved back, which was like 2000 or 01. I forget what year. Exactly. Kyle was living here at that time, too, right? Yeah. We had Kyle and Aaron Dallison had yeah. a house together here in Lakewood uh, from Escalation Anger at that time at Keel Hall and whatnot. So you could see Incantation, excuse me, Hemdale, Regurgitation, Decrepit. I mean, all throughout the year, Sodomized. Um, just That's another band. And again, I wanted stuff to come out on vinyl, on Hells, and I heard Redefining Dark stood is the Decrepit stuff. Dude, there's so you go outside of Cleveland. I'm not gonna say nobody, but for the most part, most people have no idea who that shit is. And as far as I'm concerned, if you're in a death metal and you don't know the yeah, creation sin CD and acrimonial CD, like yeah. you just have those, you're I mean you're messing out. So, dude, you know what's crazy? When I was at Maryland, I was walking by the merch tents, right? Like you guys, if you were coming up that little merch row, you guys were to the left. Then it kind of curved around that curve. Yeah, there. yeah, yeah. Um, Right by where Pyre Press and all that stuff was set up, there was a dude with a bunch of embroidered hats out. And some of them were like, you could tell he did multiples, and like there were a whole bunch of were like one offs, like Eucharist and, you know, different types of obscure demo bands. And I'm, I did a double take, I'm walking by, and I'm pretty fucked up at this time. This was like later in the day. I'm like, you know, Maryland Death Fest buzz going on. And I do a double take, make sure I'm not seeing shit. I'm like, oh shit, man. You know, it's the decrepit hat, trucker hat. Really? Big quality embroidery. Someone spent some money on it to make it, man. Yeah, that's so very surprised. Yeah, I'd, I'd be very surprised. Myself. Like, dude, you got a few of those available, man? He's like, no, I only made one, man. He's like, I got my own embroidery deal. Yeah. You know, like some shit that I know moves. Like, I just keep some. He's like, but it, I'm just a personal fan, and I, I figured I'd make one. If nobody wanted it, I'll keep it for myself. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, well, those guys are here, man. A couple of them dudes. And he ended up just giving it to yeah. to Chris. Or to, you know. Oh, yeah, his door was there yeah, with Kurt. Yeah. yeah, and Dwayne showed up, too, for a couple of days. Did Dwayne, I didn't see Dwayne out there. He didn't oh, come say dude. hi. He actually came twice, man. He, what, what, what a trooper, man. Like, it's tough for him to get out a lot. But he drove down there with us on uh, Wednesday for the Sodom Pre-Fest. And then he had to go back because he had obligations in Cleveland on Thursday and Friday. Back and forth. He, he, he caught a bus Wednesday night at like 2.14 in the morning to fucking come home. You know what I mean? What day did he come back out? Uh, and then he came back Saturday, um, you know, to see Sacrifice and okay. Dismember and everybody okay. up again. So, yeah, he was actually down there, too. Okay, no, I didn't see him. I just saw you and Dora briefly. Yeah. Um, yeah, you guys are drunk as shit. Oh. How, how else are you supposed to, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Man, guys came to Hell's Booth and snaked all my beers. No, I got one. I got one. <laughs> oh, then, then Dora must have smashed them all. No. My cooler was empty. No, I don't know about that. He had one. We, we both <laughs> sipped it. It was like you guys had some kind of lemon shit going on. It's like that deal. Shandy or something. So I, I, believe like, me, I wasn't even trying to steal your like beers, dude, because I, I was like, oh, you know what? It's, it's, like, it's like a lemonade dude, beer, but I'll drink it. Dude, I had one beer Thank the you, whole I appreciate it. It felt like that time when you buy a pizza. And you're like, yeah, you buddy can have a slice. And you go in there, you didn't even get to eat yet. You go in the box is empty. He's like, great, I bought it and got none. Fuck yeah. I don't know, man. You had those Molder guys, uh, you know, hanging oh, around man. your booth over there. No, no, they, they were, they were, they were, they were uh, smashing all my Starburst. Brought oh. a bag of Starburst Reds for him. And Air Dog, he loves them with the skins. He only eats Starburst. He's like, you, you, you eat them without the skins. Skins all a real man eats with the skins. With the paper. <laughs> With the skins, bro. Oh, with the skins. <laughs> hey, I, I remember back in the day in, in, in school, that's how you could show a girl, you know what I mean? You knew what was up. Like, girl, I'm going to wrap this Starburst without my without my hands. <laughs> What's up? You want to go on a date? <laughs> nah, some stupid... Some kids did try to do that shit back in the day. Fucking funny shit. Oh, I know. But yeah, Maryland that. Death Fest. I mean, especially, like, the time we saw you, like... What, you're you're trying later, to save money, yeah. right? You're doing yeah. shots at the hotel room. Yeah. You're drinking. Yeah. Out, you got a cooler at the room. Yeah, yeah. I don't, oh, oh yeah, yeah. dude. Yeah. No, I bought it for all the guys. For the Boulder guys. Oh yeah. yeah. Funny, yeah. I don't put it because it was. I, I was Aaron. I was saying, yeah. So I'm pretty sure Dora snaked all your beers. <laughs> like I think it was you and the Boulder guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
But, I mean, I'll tell you what, though, man. What a great show for Kerna Gia to play. Yeah, I was going to ask you, how did that go? Like, oh, uh, my God, man. How was the crowd? Amazing. I mean, first of all, Ryan and, and, and Evan are both friends of mine, dude. Totally cool dudes, man. You know, uh, Evan actually booked the Embalmer tour we did in 2017 with Mortis Skull for his uh, thing. thing. And then uh, me and Chuck booked uh, like one of his tours at the Maple Grove the first time Demolin came to Cleveland. Oh, oh yeah, With uh, yeah, yeah, Blood Incantation yeah. yep, and uh, yeah. uh, Biolic, I think yeah, it was. was, was like artificial like, Brain. Was that 17, 18? Well, six, something like that. Yeah, it was yeah. the first time they came around yeah. to the Blood Incantation mainly. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so good, good like working relationship with those guys. Actually, a uh, tidbit of knowledge, uh, Brian actually booked Ryan's band Saborium on one of the Ohio Death Fest, so one or oh two or whatever. So, I mean, if you watch the progression of, of Maryland Death Fest, just how the lineups went, I mean, it's it was very brutal, like Ohio-like, you know what I mean? Like on 03, 04, then, I mean, they've just gotten bigger and bigger and continue to build it, where now you... You get it's a lot more of a diverse festival. There's something for everybody kind of a deal, but man, what a great opportunity! So all the point is, all those years of relationship, man. They booked the Balmer at the California Death Fest. They booked the Balmer, um, you know, Maryland Death Fest 2016. We played, and I, I'd like to always get Kerna Gia. I'm like, hey man, if you ever got a spot, you know, for Kerna Gia, let me know. Here's if you don't know about it, you know, LP on Hells, you know, CD on Memento Mori, tape on Head Split, all that kind of shit. And they checked it out. He's like, hey man. You want to play? And obviously with a band like Kerna Gia, I love doing it, but not as known as like a lot of the other bands on yeah, there. So sure. when you know you're getting that, I knew it was going to be an earlier slot, right? So, but that's cool. There's no real bad slot on Maryland Death Valley. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, we played the sound stage. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. yeah so that was, the, it, was it, it was great. So we usually play Thursday. We played Thursday, which would usually be the first day of the fest. Yeah. Right? But sodom this year they did that pre-fest on a wednesday so the fest this year was five fucking days oh, no. man wednesday through sunday so you are and that was sold out so you already had like a built-in sellout, sellout crowd yeah, yeah, that's already that lurking day. around there right yeah so I'm like dude i'm telling you man um it's gonna be a lot of fucking people so we go there and play a uh, second band on the sound stage and man it was full and people responded really well to it man we had a great crowd response um, and then right after our set, like people bought basically everything we fucking had. I mean, you bought me, you brought me LPs today oh, to try yeah, to reshore yeah. us up yeah. for the for the blood show coming up. I mean, talk about that's the type when you say exposure, we don't play for exposure. Like, dude, I didn't ask them for a ton to play, man, because I know that's such a great opportunity for us. Yeah, it's your new fans. You know, get in front yeah, of that many people from all yeah. over the place, and and it, and obviously yeah. it's proven. Like, we no, no, came no, home with almost fucking sure. nothing, dude. People bought yeah, all the happened, shit. Then, What's funny is. Yeah, is Larry, you know, the, there's a few of us that are diehard underground, like myself, Chris, you know, Bergeron, like collector types. Uh, Larry's underground, been around forever too, but he's more like, you know, a stay at home type of a dude and just, you know, hard working kind of a guy. Not really in the scene, if you will, kind of a deal. Now, we've played a couple other things around the country that have been called fests, right? Like anything with a certain amount of bands is called a fest. Yeah. And it's like you go there and there's like 350 people, there's 500 people, there's like, you know, Less than a thousand people, basically smaller events, but it's still a fest, right? Sure. So that's what Larry was used to. So he only printed so many Maryland Death Fest shirts, like a handful of them. Yeah. You know, and then he gets there, he's like, "Dude, I didn't know it was gonna be like this, man." I'm like, <laughs> "Yeah, dude, Maryland Death Fest is like the Dynamo or the fucking Wacken or whatever in, in in the United States, man. Yeah. Like, you gotta print more shit than that. It's yeah. like, <laughs> if we would have had 200 shirts, we probably would have sold 200 shirts. Like, it would have been." Of the event shirt, you know what I mean? So it's like, he's like, this is a little different take than most of the shit we've played that's called a fest. I'm like, well, yeah, it's a little different, bud. <laughs> Remember for next time, you know? <laughs> but what a great opportunity, man. So what do you think sure. the entire, uh, like, who was your, uh, who did, yeah, maybe not who you like the most band-wise as a catalog. Mm -hmm. Who are you the most impressed set-wise live? And again, not necessarily I like the most albums by them or whatever. Who are you like, holy shit, I, they impressed the shit out of Well, two things, man, and, and they're cliche answers, but dude, Sodom, you got to hand it to Sodom. I mean, I saw them in, in Milwaukee Metal Fest back in the late uh, 90s, I think it was 98 or something they played, but they didn't have Frank Blackfire during that tour because he was in Creator, and that later era Creator, they you're a huge fan of and um you know what i mean it's like he was doing that at that time so we didn't get to see him if you saw that lineup plus what sucked about that show is if you remember the old milwaukee's if you ever got to go any of those those used to actually actually be pay to play largely like the label and all the bands would have to pay a thousand bucks to the promoter plus he sold tickets think about how fucked up that is with the when the koshiks were doing that 
but the show was four stages and they always ran behind so like for example when here and after came out uh went up there like the year after for that fest got a ride up with some people i think they played two songs and they're like got cut so your label or you or whoever pay a thousand dollars and the show starts running behind they, they chopped set lists at will and that included sodom i think they went over there they played like freaking 25 30 minutes yeah it was a very short set. Maybe I'm exaggerating, but it was a very short set. Yeah. So fast forward now, you get to see him with Frank Blackfire. You know what Did I mean? they play at least an hour? They played an hour and a half the first day, and I think they were oh, supposed shit, to play 50 the next day, and they played over an hour the next day, too. They were in the Agent Orange set because they yeah. threw a bunch of shit on the back end. But they were they ripped, and they were total fucking cool dudes, man. Party yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, man. I was Angel Ripper. They're, they're totally cool. Those guys like were just partying downstairs in the lobby. They weren't like shored up in their hotel room, like in a bunker or something. Yeah. But yeah, as far as performances, not to get off track, they kicked ass. They just shredded every night. Um, I thought Hemorrhage was kick ass, of course, dude. Um, Monstrosity, I think they sound good with that with that vocalist they have now. You know what I, I mean? I didn't get to watch them, but I mean, I, love, um, I, mean, I like all this. I mean, is, it, is the one on the last album, the singer? Yeah, uh, I think, yeah, yeah, it's, okay. yeah, it's that guy. Yeah. Yep. I, mean, I, thought, I mean, I like it. I mean, I, do I like it as much as, fucking, you know, the uh, first couple albums, well, even the first three? No, but I think it's still good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the yeah. eulogy dude, and then that, my, my, you know, Mike yeah. from Visual Darkness or whatever, yeah. uh, artwork, that dude was, was good in there too, from Epoxy and whatnot. But they were kick ass, even though they were a replacement band. I was really looking forward to seeing D Flesh, man. Oh yeah, yeah. I wanted, you know? I wanted to interview them too. Why did? Did you hear why they couldn't get in? I don't know the details. I hear as long as you have the are. visas, it's pretty easy to get. Once you, the visas are approved, it's like usually no problem. Yeah, they might have pulled some yeah. shit like you know going through. They didn't claim right, oh, okay. you know, because that happened to uh, Chicago. Yeah. Uh, you know. What I'm talking about. Yeah. Well, so uh, what about uh, any stale bread there? And the, well, I mean, the, uh, and, and as far as other good bands, Dismember was great too because, like I say, that was the so first time. Something that started raining, but, but it was home. a minor drizzle for like eight, ten minutes. I didn't even get wet. Yeah, but I mean, they had Robert Senna back back on guitar, man. So that was cool to see the original four dudes back yeah. on stage together because you didn't see that for a period yeah, of years no. since yeah, yeah. you know, even in '06 when they reformed to play no, Maryland before. Yeah, yeah. So that was a good set. Um, their cat eye sound I thought sounded good on the big stage, you know, seen them several times, but they they were fucking good. Um stabbing, you know, for the brutal death metal style. I mean, they always kick ass. Internal suffering, of course, you know, good friends, total underground dudes. They fucking rip for the brutal front. Um Spectral Voice. I didn't actually watch them there, but they kicked ass in Cleveland. Because I, I had just seen them a few days ago, but another awesome band. Um Was there anybody that you were wanting to see that you were disappointed by? We're like, ah, Maybe it's not sound, set lists, uh, uh, whatever reason, you just would have been disappointed. Like, is there anybody that you're... Um, I'm trying to think, man. No, there, there's really not, dude. It's just a pro event. I mean, everybody sounded good. There's bands that I didn't... Re that weren't my, my favorite bands, but I yeah. I didn't go watch. Yeah, yeah. No, same you know thing, what I mean? Yeah. I just yeah. kind of watched the stuff that I wanted to watch, watch yeah, and the rest of, of it was hang out in the courtyard and yeah. see all your friends from around the world. I mean, yeah. beheaded, totally cool. They, I mean, I had never seen them. And I, I will say that, dude, like they had a fill in singer or whatever the deal was. And David Kachia, the dude, you know, renowned worldwide shirt collector type dude. But I've known that dude forever, man. And they played Ohio in 2002. He was here. Um, but uh, they kicked ass for Brutal Death Metal shit, man. And I'm familiar with the CDs and all the rest of that stuff, man. But live, they really came through really well. My Severe Torture. Yeah, that's another awesome. band that kicked ass. I agree. I watched, I, how yeah. could I not me mention that? Yeah. I mean, that was one of the they I sound ever. great. And without Seth on drums, I didn't yeah. know what to think, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, okay, cool. Well, does it do the, as long as they have the original fucking singer, then yeah. at least that or Patrick, because yeah, yeah. you got to have Pat playing bass yeah. and you got to have him singing at least yeah. for severe torture, right? Yeah, I agree. And outdoor stage, big sound, dude. His vocals are just the way you want them. <laughs> Look at that real signature yeah. growl that he's got. Yes, I, even picked, I picked up the LP there too. I listened to yeah. it. It's pretty good. It's yeah, good yeah, it's fucking awesome, man. I mean, so they 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 delivered the goods. Uh, Vomitory, another one. Um, yeah, just a killer lineup. Like I say, the only thing is, I just wish I could have saw the, you know, the Flash. Yeah. That would have been great. That under the Blade CD, especially yeah. man. And yeah. fast forward those two specifically. Yeah, hundred percent. Damn man, and, and what a step up that band took, right? Like, because I knew them beforehand too. Um, I think I might have even got one of them fucking CDs from Craig back in the day, um, of the earlier ones. Or Brian or Dwayne, one of them, but that Abracadabra, Abracadabra and, yeah. and that, that kind of stuff. There's yeah. like, there's no comparison to yeah, something like that up. to like, you know, into the, 
under the blade. Yeah, the two. Fuck. Yeah, the, 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 under the blade and after Dabber were the, like the two that I heard first. Mm. You know, that's when I kind of was in. When I whenever I picked them up, it was like those two around the same time. Maybe they came in through Hell's in the early days. Whatever it was, but that was my introduction to them. Did you get to catch uh, Cryptopsy for the Blasphemy Made Flesh set? I didn't. The thing is with Cryptopsy is it's like no worm is kind of like yeah. no go for me. Yeah. Did you get to see him on the Lord Worm reunion tours in Cleveland when they came? Dude, back I was so through? I was like so oh five. I dude, I was so checked out on Cryptopsy after by the time a Nebula Bag came out, I didn't pay attention. I didn't even know he came back until probably ten years after he was already gone again. Dude, when he came back, yeah, they played. Uh, they played Peabody's, and I, I think they played one other place too here actually. But he he went old school. He had like the the communion cup with the worms. Well, He's worms, feeding yeah, them yeah. in the front, heard, front yeah. people in the crowd and stuff, dude. It was totally. No, they played. They did play Cleveland. Yeah. What's uh? Where, where they, what, they, they they played Peabody's Peabody, for sure. Peabody, but I'm, so. I'm thinking they played somewhere that else. The too, old, I that would have been the newer Peabody. The boy. newer one on Twenty First Street. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. They're both gone now. Sucks, man. But like. So, um, you know, with all the distro customers, I, I said a question, man. Like, did you uh, were you able to stay focused with all the dudes in booty shorts over there? Were you, you know, I could have stayed focused. Focus on some sales, you know. Well, I see. Were you, were you wandering eyes. E What's going on, e man? Easy, e man, the goddamn <laughs> stage because I got I, I got to be doing that all the hand shaking well, and, and El Cat but, and shooting the videos. So between shooting videos, you know, shaking hands, kissing babies, and keeping everybody happy. Um, that's why booty short guys came up to me though. In person, they were just walking. walking. That's like the new thing, man. House Heroes, and that's then what here, I'm... like uh, it's it's just like uh, you know that's threes like, threes company fucking uh, like you know running shorts and. More than we, we really were in that little area for yeah for the entire time. Honestly, kind of got to hang out yeah. with fans. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. As so, opposed to like working, you know what I mean? Right. So I mean, it was still a lot of work, but like I didn't see it. Before, but like House Heroes, I saw a lot of that shit. Well, in general, what was your take on the overall? Uh, this is a metal spectator fan. What did you think of the overall crowd at Maryland? Like, is is this, is your opinion? Is it deplorable? Metal's alive. Metal's fucking weak. It's a bunch of trend hoppers, weekend warriors. I Tell think. Us, what do you? What, what was your overall consensus? In I your, think it's in your opinion. Honestly, I think it's all that, and I, and, and I'll tell you why, it's man. Like, it all? You know, it, it, dude. First of all, I like the layout this year. You know, with all, all the venues were set up, but you you interact and you pass by a lot of people. And let's be honest, dude, I got the sunglasses on. I got a nice buzz going on. Guess what, dude? I'm people watching always, dude. It's like it's like a favorite pastime of mine, dude. It's like just fucking people watch people. Like all the shit you say in your head, like look at that motherfucker over there. Look at that fucking stupid haircut. That guy's fucking <laughs> fuck that guy. You know what I mean? You don't even know these people. Be like, oh, fuck that guy. Like you know? It's just like I just I don't know if everybody else does that. I do that. I walk around just like. Well, put this way, okay. When you're walking around, crowd, you have yeah. a metal show. If anything, what's something that annoys the piss out of you more than anything? That get, that get, sure. Well, no, maybe he just said that he brought me. Is that the most annoying thing? What, what, um, is, what are you like? What the fuck is going on? Like, or maybe there is something. I, 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 don't, I, don't, I, I don't know, man. I, I just find things interesting. I wouldn't say it annoys me because I don't get that much of an emotional rise out of it. But like, it's just, a, it's just amazing the amount of people that you see over the oh the larpers the full time larpers like I'm gonna go down there and larp as a fucking Viking or as Jesus Christ oh, or whatever. Again, I, I guess I'm just yeah. not paying attention. I saw a girl in like a duck outfit. Yeah, I didn't see any of that. Duck outfit. Hey man, everybody wants to be noticed somehow, man. Yeah. You know whatever. Everybody needs a need, needs a gimmick, right? But as far as what you notice when you take a look around, it's funny because me and Dora, you know, we always got huge shirt collections too and shit. So it's like. You know, he had. We both brought sinister shirts, different ones. But he has the one uh, from Diabolical Summoning that with the blue and the red. Yeah. You know, it's a reprint a dude made, but they're they're good quality ones. You know, and um, he's like, I'm like, all right, dude, you wear sinister fucking Thursday. It, it, it's it's totally like sounds bad. You have to coordinate what we wear. <laughs> But, but like, it's because, like, I don't want to show up wearing the same shit as some other motherfuckers. Yeah, Especially yeah, something yeah. rare like Maryland Death Fest, you're not just grabbing off the top of the stack. Like, you're going to, you're, you're picking, like, some, some of your more rare or your cooler shit to wear. It's like, I have to tell them, like, dude, don't, don't bring fucking, you know, Corpus Delicta. I don't bring Unleashed. Don't bring this. Like, the most obscure shit. Yeah. But uh, we both brought Sinister shirts, and I'm lucky that he wore his the day he did because there was a, Younger, like in his twenties, black dude. The next day, wearing a, that same sinister shirt. Oh no! Shit. So the observation I can make off of that is, when you look at that crowd, metal is alive and well. And there was a whole young generation of people that's kind of filled the gaps. You know what I mean? So those ranks are there. You walk around and you see dudes in their twenties with like super rare and obscure patches on their shit, man. Like a real cool shirt a lot of these companies now are repressing classic designs yeah so whereas like i might have the original shirt and i'm walking around you see some guy it's like 
pristine, brand new con condition or whatever. Yeah. It's just like, oh, okay, you got that one from the guy in Greece, or oh, okay, that's that dang Jaya guy, or oh, hey, that's you kind of get to recognize what's out there, but it's almost like retro in a sense that you're seeing shit that you're familiar with, but here's some dude that's 20 something wearing it. Yeah. So obviously, they're seeking it out, whether they're true. They can't tra teleport themselves and make yeah, themselves, yeah, no, no. A, you know, into death metal in 1993. No, of course. But they're repping that shit. Yeah. So you see the whole gambit between that all the way up to, like, your modern shit, like your Megastomp bands and all the rest of that. But at the end of the day, man, everybody's there for metal, right? And then you got the people that you that just surprise the hell out of you that have, like, a, a thing where it's got, like, a possessed back patch on the back yeah. of their jacket. Then it has... Pantera, Cold Col Chamber, this. it's funny. I've noticed Marilyn that. Manson, yeah. like all that shit on there too. I'm like, it drives me for a loop too when I see that shit. But I'm like, hey man, You're you know, on, on, on the other hand too, that's that's the fucking epitome of not giving a fuck, right? Yeah, that's that's, that's a guy that actually, and you he know, just what? likes what he likes. I kind of like. I know. I agree. I would actually say that that guy is an anti poser. Yeah, because he's actually because that guy actually puts what he listens to he on his care jacket what on display. Right? He doesn't care what anyone else. Where some other fucking guy is just going to put a bunch of possessed and Sodom and yeah. destruction patches on his shit because he wants to be a thrash yeah. kid. Correct. Yeah. I hundred percent. So, hundred percent agree. I almost have more respect for the guy with the Manson patch. Me agree. Honestly, man. Me agree. Yeah, <laughs> I, 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 I hope so. That's, I try to say that on the channel too. I was like, people, you miss use that word poser like a motherfucker. You're I was like. 26? Yeah. No, you take it, hog it up all the air time. Paul, what do you want to add in there, God damn it? Hey, man, I'm Anyone just trying to... Get... I've got a few people telling me that uh, your last video was their fave. They thought you were hilarious. Anybody okay. come up to you in person and say, like, and ask you about certain things? Or... I've, I've actually had... You know what? There is a J-Dog effect. So all of you out there that pay your $10 and get your mention. <laughs> pay your $10 and get your mention. Yeah, right, it's it's it. worth it, okay? Yeah. So, um, yeah, I've had people come up to me at Hell's Heroes. I've had people come up to me, like... All over the place where I've played, like, hey man, I saw your interview on J Dog's channel, man. Hey man, I saw you on J Dog's yeah. channel, man. So yeah, I mean, what do you say? That's real cool. I just say, I would say, yeah, that's awesome, man. He's doing great. His channel's, you know, picking up. Obviously, you have an audience. Yeah. So I have had it mentioned to me not just once, but you know, more Same, than half people times. like it. Like, yeah, yeah. You buying that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You buying yeah. that? Yeah. Yeah. This one won't. This this one won't be. You know what I mean? Is 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 uh, probably. Well received as the last one because there's no, uh, there's. I'm not talking shit about it. Right, that's what right I really like. I mean, we'll come back yeah. and regroup for another shit talk video though, because I don't give a fuck about saying my I'm opinion. Video, you know that, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. I could care less who I offend or anybody, and you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. come, come try to offend me. If you're offended by me, then come try to offend me. I guarantee you can say whatever you want to me, dude. And how much? How much you think Kurner G is suck? I could give a fuck, dude. You know yeah. what I mean? You suck. You're the worst vocalist that was ever an embalmer. Your era. Blow. Okay, come tell it to me. I, <laughs> I could give a fuck, dude. I'll walk away. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or say something worse to you. Yeah. More yeah. likely. Hell yeah. yeah. So let us know in the comments, goddammit. Do you want goddamn Paul back? You're like, keep that guy the fuck out of here. That's yeah. some stale bread, goddammit. He us wants know. more shit talking. We'll yeah, get to it. it. Yeah. Later. Drink up, you fucks. <laughs> <laughs>